OSPF tag field. In this video, I'm going to talk about the OSPF tag field and its function. You know that in previous video, we learned about the OSPF downbeat and you know that we can use OSPF downbeat for preventing loop when we are advertising internal OSPF routes in MPLS layer 3 VPN when we are using OSPF between the P and C. I uh, talked about the OSPF downbeat in the previous video and now I'm going to show you the OSPF tag field its function and the difference with the OSPF downbeat. Let me to use this scenario, in, in this scenario we will configure, we will learn the concepts and we can verify the operation of the OSPF tag field. Here we have a service provider as you learned in the previous video. This is the service provider R1, R2, R3 and R4. This service provider has one customer with two sites. This is the customer site one, let me to write here, this is the customer, the one customer, customer A for example site one and this is the customer A site 2. This means that we need to, uh, for example, uh, uh, finally configure availability for these two sites and these two sites can reach together. Here also we have a backdoor link. Look at here, without this backdoor link, without this gray area, we have R5, I5, R5 connected to R1 and R also R6 connect to, connected to R4. This means that this is the normal MPLS layer 3 VPN and we use for example OSPF between router 1 and router 5 and router 4 and router 6. Router 5 is CE, router 1 is PE, router 6 is CE, router 4 is PE. Because of that now I, I am ensure that you can configure the MPLS layer 3 VPN between these two sites. But here we have a new uh, for example links this links is a backdoor links we, ca we can use the backdoor for connectivity for fault tolerance for example when we don't have connectivity from the mpls layer 3 vpn assume that mpls layer 3 vpn failed and because of that we need to have a direct connection between these two sites in some cases we are using the backdoor link when you are using the backdoor link because we have one additional pass maybe you, you encounter with some features with some problems and you will need to uh, for example solve that problem one of them is the uh, for one of the functions that we can use in the ospf between p and c and you are we are using the backdoor link is the ospf tag field ospf tag field has some function here let me to show you look at here Assume that we are advertising the, uh, for example, uh, routes of customer A site 1 to the MPLS layer 3 VPN and then these routes can be received to the customer A2. And also you know, you know that here we have a router between two sites for uh, and redistribution is configured in this router and we need to, uh, for example, redistribute the routes if we don't have connectivity between the, uh, for example, site of the, between the MPLS layer 3 VPN. But here we have a special situation. The special situation is that one routes, one external routes now is redistributed into the OSPF of the customer A1. For example, here we have customer A1 and this is the external networks. We are redistributing these networks to the customer A1 network to OSPF. And because of that, R1, because R1 has OSPF neighborship with R5, need to advertise these external networks to the other sites. Because of that, it can ad advertise the quad1 slash 32 to the router 4. Then router 4 needs to uh, advertise or send the update to the router 6. And when router 6, again, advertising the networks to the router 7 with the OSPF, and after the redistribution between these two OSPF process, R7 can send this update to the, uh, for again, R5. And now R5, again, receiving this update, should send to the R1 without any feature. R1 uh, cannot understand that it advertised this route itself. And because of that, again, it should advertise to R4, then again, R4 to R6, R6 to R7. R7 to R5, again R1, and then and then. This means that we are uh, we have loop in advertising the updates. But what is the solution? 
The solution is the OSPF tag field. You can't use the OSPF down bit. Why? Look at here. When if assume that you are you assign OSPF down bit here, it's okay. But when you are redistributing the OSPF receive roots from uh, in R7 to another OSPF, the, the down bit should be removed because of that. When the update received to the R1, R1 can't see any down bit. But here we have another option. We call it tag. When you are redistributing BGP to OSPF, automatically tag value, you know, the in the OSPF, in the LSA type 5 and also LSA type 7, we have tag field. When you are redistributing BGP to OSPF, automatically a tag should be assigned to, to this update. I will talk about the tag and the detail of tag, but let me to say that uh, in this time the tag is a function okay of the as number of the uh, provider let me to use 65000 here but the tag no, is not exactly 65000 it's a function of 65000 but it's good for this time to say that the tag is 65000 the as number because of that here you will see the tag as 65000 for example and then the one important thing is that when you are redistributing again this update in r7 the tag remains available because because of that the tag remains 65000 and now when the rotor one receives one update and it sees that the as number of 65000 or a function of 65000 in the update it can understand that this update received from my service provider from myself or myself network because of that it should block the update and it should not advertise the tag in, into the, uh, for example, service provider again. This is the function of tag. But if we want to understand exactly what is happening, we need to configure this scenario. And for and because of that, I configured this scenario from scratch. Maybe you don't need to see all of the parts of the configuration. If you want, you can uh, only verify the parts that you need. But I am going to configure the scenario from the scratch. Let me first starting the uh, configuration with the uh, service provider. And after that, uh, uh, step by step, I added the configuration to this scenario. I'm going to use the notepad file. Only the first part of configuration include the configuration of the service provider. The service provider is using the OSPF version one. Look at the OSPF process one. This is the R1. We need EN, conf T, and then host name, uh, for example, R1 interface. Here we have interface facet and 00. The IP address of this interface is the, uh, for example, 10.1.2.1.255.255.255.0 and then no shutdown. Also, let me to enabling the OSPF, a uh, network type of point to point on this interface with the IP OSPF network point to point. Okay. And after that, we need to configure loopback interface, interface loopback zero. This is the P rotor. IP address of this interface is 192.168.254, then 1, quad 255, and also we need to configure OSPF on this rotor, rotor OSPF1. Rotor ID, where for example, 192.168.254.1. You can configure the interfaces with the OSPF, with, I, with the network command, and also you can configure with this command. Look at here, IP OSPF1 area 0. The command on the interface maybe it's easier let me to use the command here again ip ospf1 area zero until now we configured both of the ip addressing and also the ospf on this scenario also let me to enable mpls ldp auto config on this rotor rotor one and the next part is the configuration of the uh, for example vrfs let me to configure only one vrf vrf definition a okay and then the rd65000 column one then we need address family address family ipv4 or ipv4 unicast road target again both now is 65000 column one and then we have interface fast ethernet 01 it's a member of the vrf a vrf forwarding a and then the ip address of this interface is 10151 
255.255.255.0 and then no shutdown. Also, we can configure BGP on this interface, on this router, router BGP 65000. No BGP default IP v4 unicast. And after that, the neighbor is the, uh, for example,